Obviously, the first one on this list has to be the ability to charge this thing completely off-grid. I mean, what other car ever can you drive into the middle of nowhere, camp for a few days, and when you're ready to go, you're basically fully fueled up and ready to go. Now, obviously, the thing with solar, it's not just the time of the year. You're going to be doing a lot worse in winter than you are with summer, but it's also the latitude of where you live. The Aptera advertises up to 64 kilometers of range added per day from solar. For the sake of argument, let's assume that that's right at the equator with maximum peak efficiency. Where I live up here closer to Toronto, it's probably going to be about 58% efficiency or about 37 kilometers per day. Still, even up here, if I go on a three-day camping trip in my Aptera, when I leave, that's up to 111 kilometers of range added back in just from leaving the car parked in the sun. And the thing about that solar charging is it's always on. It's always there, always ready to go. There's no setup involved. It's just there. As long as your Aptera is setting out in the sun, it is adding miles back into the battery from it. And so circling back around to the off-grid charging, this means you are not beholden to the existing charging infrastructure. Charging infrastructure limitations for like road trips and adventures haven't been a thing for quite a few years at this point, but because of the Aptera Solar, you can go as rural as you want with it. And the second one on this list is the fact that you have a portable 700 watt solar power station with you, ready to go, wherever you want. So, I mean, there's the obvious stuff like being able to charge your phone, your laptop, your tablets without having to dig into the car's battery at all. But then there's the even larger stuff, things like, like full-size e-bikes, charging those up, or powering CPAP machines, or keeping electric chainsaws charged, or even running your Starlink 24-7 if you need to maintain connectivity. You can also run standard camp electronics pretty much indefinitely, things like fridges, cooking stoves, and even heaters, and still stay neutral or even still positive on your Aptera's charge level. All of that you can run pretty much indefinitely as long as you balance the power used with the amount of power coming back in from the solar. You can even use the Aptera itself for sleeping in since much like a Tesla, it'll have a version of camp mode letting you run the HVAC overnight to keep it warm during the cold winters or cool during the hot summers. And all of the power used for climate control gets balanced back during the next day from the solar input. And the third thing is having that solar as a backup in case the power goes down wherever you are. If you frame the Aptera in your mind as a giant battery station, you start to think of some really interesting use cases for it. I think people are really sleeping on the emergency preparedness aspect of what the Aptera offers. Like, although you might not be planning to rely on the Aptera's solar power, you still have that at your fingertips. It's just there and ready to go at a moment's notice. And we're not just talking about out on the go, like at camp either. You can use it as a home backup system as well. And so as long as you balance the power you're using, whether it's just a quick 24 hour blackout or weeks of no power, the Aptera has you covered for backup emergency power. And then on the flip side, if the power does go out while you're at home, well, with the Aptera's built-in solar, it could still charge even without any power to your home. So you can keep it topped up to do local errands that you still have to do, or in an emergency situation, situation where you need to leave, you don't have to worry about if it has enough charge or not to get you out of that emergency situation. The Aptera is basically as self-sufficient of a vehicle as you can get with no reliance on any outside power source. And the fourth thing I wanted to talk about is how much money you save. And I'm not just talking about your daily average commuting, but on road trips. Every day that the Aptera is sitting out in the sun charging is money put back into your wallet. And I mean, if you're charging at home, the Aptera is already super cheap to run because of how efficient it is but let's do the math. When I looked it up, the average price of electricity overnight in the USA was about 16 cents per kilowatt hour. In the Southern states, we are getting up to that 64 kilometers of range a day. That's about four kilowatt hours of solar input per day, or about 64 cents per day. Now, that's not much, but that's still $233 saved per year based just on your home electric rates. And that effectively means if you're driving less than the solar is putting back into the car per day, you're effectively driving around for free all the time. And like I was mentioning earlier, that's not just for keeping the car charts for driving. You could tap into that and power your home for that as well. That was just about home electric rates. What about when you're road tripping? I mean, DC fast chargers are pretty expensive at a rate that looks to be about an average of 50 cents per kilowatt hour. Now the Aptera already being super efficient, that's about $20 to fully charge the Aptera's 40 kilowatt hour battery from zero to hundred. And by charging up with solar, instead of using a DC fast charger, that's $20 you just saved. Put another way, the Aptera's range is estimated to be about 643 kilometers on a full charge. And that range estimate does not include power input from the solar, which at peak charging efficiency can account for up to 10% of your battery per day. So not only is the Aptera already an incredibly cheap vehicle to road trip due to its amazing efficiency at only $20 per day if you drive less than that 643 kilometers per day, but that solar charging immediately cuts 10% off 
of that cost per day. And that's if you're driving the full range of the Aptera per day. If you drive more conservatively with say only half or maybe even a quarter of your car's range per day, the more the solar input starts to have a strong displacement on how much you're spending on your road trip. To the point that if you go as low as averaging about 50 kilometers per day, you basically get to road trip for free. And the fifth one on the list and one that I don't feel is talked about nearly enough is the fact that the solar is expandable. This entire video has just been about the built-in 700 watts of solar on the car. But there's the very extremely underappreciated feature of the car that nobody really talks about and that's that the Aptera will have a jack for expanding with additional solar panels with the ability to add up to a total 1,500 watts of total solar input, more than doubling your capacity. This means that even here close to Toronto, that's up to 79 kilometers a day of solar. Down south, closer to the equator, that's up to 138 kilometers every day. That's over 21% of the car's battery charged up per day, five days to go from zero to 100. So with an average of 100 kilometers of driving per day, you can road trip without having to be anywhere near an outlet of any kind. No power source, none whatsoever. So are you starting to see why I'm so excited for the Aptera? I can't wait to get my hands on one. I feel like these things are so underrated. I've had mine reserved for a while now. If you're interested, use the link in the pinned comment and description to get $30 off the $100 reservation fee and it puts credit towards mine. And I am really, really hoping to get a hold of one of these things because I wanna be able to show everyone on my channel firsthand what these things are capable of for everything I showed on this list.